Hi, this is David Golly from Pentagon Solutions, and we're taking a look at Revit 2013. And so we're going to have a look at collaboration and uh, using work, work sets within Revit. This normally is an area that causes a lot of confusion for users, but it's relatively straightforward to set up with a bit of planning. And work sets allows multiple users uh, to work on a single central model and take away data that they need to edit and uh, relinquish control back to users who need to edit that data as well. So what I've done for this environment is I've mimicked two users under my options file in here. Um, I've got a user called dgolly and I've got another user called uh, Joe Blocks. Essentially these would be two different users within the company and um, trying to access the central model. So the first thing we need to do is actually set up the central model to start with. And I'm going to simply open the project up that I want to use. And you can see this is on my Z drive, so this typically would be uh, on your server. Um, where you want to use it, this is the primary school, and I'm just going to simply pick it up. Um, to actually create this and save it back uh, as a central model, we need to do what's called enable work sets. Now, nothing's being enabled at this stage. So, if we look at the collaborate tab, um, we can see the button called work sets. And if I click on work sets, um, it automatically puts all annotation to a work set called Shared Levels and Grids, which you can change, and you must have at least one remaining work set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a work set called Classroom, and hit OK. Now that's calculating in the background, it can take a bit of time, just depending on the size of your model. Um, a typical example where you might want to use work sets if you have different levels and users are working on different, uh, those different levels. Or you might have the building simply split up, maybe someone's looking at the um, interior while someone's looking at the exterior envelope. So you can see now the work sets actually have appeared on the screen and it does say that it's editable. This simply means that I have actually control of them at this stage. Um, so what I want to do is add another new work set called um, Sports Hall. And I'm just going to hit OK. So you decide on the work sets that you want to put in place here for your organisation. And again, it would consider it would be a bit of planning. They can be added after the central model has been created as well. So I'm just going to simply hit OK. We're going to make uh, Sports Hall the active work set. I'm just going to say no to that. And so you can see how a work set is actually being applied. You know, on the annotation and grids, etc., all those grid lines actually do go to a work set called Shared Levels and Grids. But if I picked a typical wall, you can see it's actually assigned um, to um, Classroom in there. Um, it's not edited by anyone at the present because um, I don't have control of it. Um, but what I want to do is pop it out to a 3D view and I want to simply pick up the sports hall because maybe I've got different users actually editing this hall. Um, I'm going to use my shift key just to deselect some items. I don't want part of the sports hall in there. And again, I can use my filter to take out some items that I don't physically want. And what we can do is simply say that that work set is now called Sports Hall. So we've got three work sets. We've got the one for annotation grids in there. We've got the one for the Sports Hall and we've got one physically for the classrooms. Um, now there's an interesting button here called Relinquish All Mine. So any ones that I have edit and control of, um, I can relinquish. I won't be able to do that until I actually save this back and make it a central file. And just to see that, Relinquish All Mine, it'll tell me I can't do it. So what I simply do in here, um, as I hit save, it'll say, tell me, Revit's tell me this is the first time that you've saved this project uh, since work sets has been enabled, and this is going to become the central file. I'm going to say yes. Then as good practice, once, once that's done, I want to relinquish all mine. That's the best way to actually set up your central model. Of course, it may vary on, on the depend on project. So I'm just going to say relinquish all mine. And then I'm going to simply save again. So once that's been relinquished, um, I can simply save the project or quit out. As so. Um, now we have a central file that has all uh, the control of the work sets relinquished, and we can have multiple users can actually edit or uh, access that file. And all you would simply do is user one set to Joe Blogs. We go to open, go and find this file on the uh, server. So I browse to my Z drive where I want to go. I would see the file um, and I would simply open it up.
like so. So that'll open the file up. Another user will come along. And at this stage, um, and they'll want to open the file, so they'll go open. They'll go to the exact same location, and they'll open the file up. It's just hidden in the background. And that'll open up. Okay, so I've got my two files and what it's actually done is it's taken these files and it's taken them from the central model and they're actually on my local disk. So you can see that, you can see along the top bar that it actually says primary school architecture Degali RVT. Over here it'll say primary school architecture JVlogs RVT. So it's detached them from the central model. Um, they will be under a location, say under my documents. Again, you can change the location of this, etc. So you can see the two files physically in there. And I'm working on this as two different users. So I could say user Degali. I want to actually control the classroom areas in here. So I'm simply going to go into my collaborate view and I'm going to go to my work sets. I can see that they're free. And I want to take ownership of the classrooms to actually edit. And I'm going to hit OK. Um, Joe Vlogs over here, he actually wants to take ownership of the sports hall, so he's going to go to Collaborate, he's going to go to Work Sets, and you can see that he can't take control of the classroom because it actually knows that I have control. If I try to change that in there, it won't let me do it. It says it's edited by another user. So I'm going to take control of the sports hall, and I'm simply going to hit OK. And so we can see how this environment maybe uh, works in here. Um, in the sports hall, we need to add in some new doors. So we've got some doors coming along here. I can simply go to doors, pick up my doors from the library, type of door that I want to actually add in. Um, I'm not going to load any in, uh, ones up, just take some of the internal ones. Let's position them in. Now you'll see that, that the information actually isn't live. I have to actually synchronize this and save it back to the central model. Um, and I can do that in the collaborate button, um, synchronize the central, or on my quick access toolbar, I've got a synchronize now button. I simply hit synchronize now. That'll synchronize back to the central model. Um, so any use, other users taking it off will actually have the updated copy. For this user to get that, they would have to do the same. Again, they can do it through the quick access toolbar, synchronize now, and you'll get to see the update come through. Now that user can't actually change that door. Say from a, a protocol in there, um, that is locked to the user Joe blocks and um, they physically can't change any of that information in there okay let's go back and have a look at this user and we're going to add in a bit of a classroom area so a bit of a store in here so we'll go back to the architecture we'll go to wall again we'll put in a 75 mil stud like so and we'll simply add a door in against that so we'll go back in the door and we'll put that information in Again, the user over here won't see this information. What I need to do is physically synchronize this with my uh, the central model. And this user over here, again, they would need to synchronize that with the central model. They would synchronize now and they would get the update. So the interesting thing is, um, and again, you can see the update coming in place there, GD21, GD21. What happens if you have a user that tries to edit the same information or data that um, or elements that the other user actually has locked to their work, work set. Well, this is the beauty about this. You can't have any stale data. Uh, you can't have someone else taking control of something that someone else already owns. An example in here is this door. So this actually belongs, um, it belongs to Degali in here, and it's part of the classroom. I mean, I can see that in Joe Blog's one. It belongs to Degali, it's part of the classroom. So let's get, let's get synchronized and up to date. So, um, well, we are synchronized at the minute, so if I try to make a change in here, so if I click on this and say, well, look, I want to change the type of door out to a 1210, it'll actually say up here, you can't do it. You can't edit it until uh, Degali resaves the element uh, to central and it relinquishes the control. Well, I can say, well, look, it's important for me to make that change, um, so I'm going to place that request live. I'm simply going to say, look, I'm going to place a request to Degali. So that request is going to be done. So um, it says the can't element um, can't edit the element until he receives the central model. So over here, I've got a request from uh, Joe Blog saying, "Look, need to get access to this door." 
So I can say, well, look, show me the door they want access to. If I hit show, it'll zoom to the area. it highlight the actual door. And I say, well, look, I'm either happy to grant that or deny it. In this case, I'm going to say, I'm going to grant you control of it. So I'm going to grant that through to the user. Um, the user over here at Blogs will get a notification saying editing request granted. So I can say, OK, show me. Yep, I'm happy enough. So I can now make the change to that door. I can simply select it and I now have the control of it. So I can pop it down to the size of the door I physically wanted. And again, I can save it, synchronize with the central model. User D Golly then can then synchronize as well. So I can go back to collaborate and they can synchronize in. And again, it will update. But the user, this user on the left hand side now, uh, D Golly, he doesn't have control. Um, it's very important as part of the process that the work sets are actually set up and established in the first instance. Um, one good thing about this is you've got nice control tools. If we pop this out to a 3D view, so let's take a look at this in 3D. Okay, and let's get a bit of a shaded area on it. What we can actually do is we can have a look at the actual, um, we can grey out inactive work sets. So we can grey out, so you can see it's greyed out the sports hall. Um, just slightly in the screen because it doesn't apply to me. If I go to the ground floor, I've got nice display controls down here. Um, down in my work sets, I can say, well, who are the owners of this? So well, let's have a look at this, and it'll highlight who the owners are for the physical work sets. Now, to see the control of that, um, or the legend information, you can simply go to workspace display settings, and you can see the different owners that are actually part of this. Again, you've got other controls in here. Uh, you can look for any uh, updates, or you can actually say, well, highlight it by work sets. And again, it'll highlight um, based on the different work sets. And if we had a look at the display settings in there, there's the classroom, there's the shared level and grids, and there's the sports hall. Part of the key to this is do make sure you actually synchronize um, with the central model often. Um, and when you're saving this file back, that information is going physically back into the central model at one source. And again, you can just simply quit out your Revit. So in summary on this, I've got a bit of a PowerPoint. Um, it's a lot of information actually to take in, but this is the basic uh, level for enabling work sets. What you want to do is decide on your central model location. So decide where it is in the server where you want to actually save the information to. You open the file up, um, or if it's saving for the first time, then you enable your work sets. You add in any appropriate work sets for the project as planned. So bear in mind that the annotation work sets are mandatory and you at least have to have one work set in place. At that stage, my advice is to save back to the central location because you can, once you do that, you can relinquish all the appropriate work sets you have access to. And then you would save back again. And that's your central model actually set up and established. Next, all you do is get users to open up and take their local copy. And users can take that copy and they can take it off site as well and they can actually work on it. Make sure they do sync back to central. Um, okay, looking at the workflow in there, you've got your central model, which is based on your server. You enable work sets. You've got your various team members in your organization. And what happens is they detach the local models. So that's going to go to their documents or their, their hard disk somewhere. And what they do is they synchronize with Central. They can relinquish their work set and they can also place editing requests through to the users. But finally on this, a couple of good tips, best practice. Um, do plan this in the office, test it on sample data, don't take your biggest job. Uh, you don't need to start with work sets immediately. Um, in fact, you'll only start working with them once you get to the model to a certain stage. If you're in conceptual design or RIBA stage um, C, you, you wouldn't be working with work sets in there. Make sure all appropriate users can access um, the central model location. That, that's very, very important. Um, there's no point in having it on a location that users can't actually get access to. Um, do review the technical advice documents on work sets um, provided by Autodesk or contact myself. There's a whole host of information out there. Um, don't edit the central model. Maybe occasions that um, you do need to do this, but don't do it. Um, uh, talk to your BIM manager uh, in there before you do that. Um, thanks for your time. Um, my name is David Golly from Pentagon Solutions.